Welcome to AeroPCR 2019. I'm Sonia Petronio, and I have the pleasure to be with Bernard Prendergast and Francesco Maizano. And we will talk about a little bit on functional mi uh, mitral regurgitation and the news that we have uh, today on this subject. And, uh, well, I would like to ask Francesco, uh, why this, what, what do you think about the need of uh, uh, deciding a statement, some, uh, some, some thoughts about uh, functional mitral regurgitation after two big trials? So 2018 has been an important year for uh, mitral intervention, specifically for heart failure and uh, uh, leaflet repair. Uh, we had two important uh, trials which were presented and these two trials have been somehow uh, contradictory. There is a opposite outcome in the two trials. There has been a lot of effort to try to, to get a uh, overarching uh, concept which is connecting the two trials. At the end of the day, the two trials have generated a little bit of confusion in the community. Uh, we understand that we need to improve our patient selection, but actually we don't know yet how to select these patients. So I think it, it was a good time to put the efforts together and try to get a position statement. This is very important, very interesting. And Bernard, which are really the key points of this statement? Well, the purpose of the statement was to put these trials in the wider context of the treatment options for secondary or functional mitral regurgitation. We've known for a long time that medical therapy has underpinned the treatment of heart failure. We know that there's been very strong randomised control trial evidence, and we recognise that medical therapy helps some patients. But equally, a lot of patients do badly over long-term follow-up. So we need to think beyond medical treatment and we need to acknowledge the fact that cardiac resynchronization can play a role in selected patients, though its role has never been examined formally in a randomized control trial. And we need to acknowledge that the evidence base supporting surgery in secondary mitral regurgitation is also very limited, with very weak recommendations from guidelines. So the, um, the position statement has put the, uh, the, the Mitra France trial and the COAP trial in the context of wider treatment. And broadly speaking, we've, uh, we've looked at uh, the uh, trials in detail alongside other authors and other experts from around the world. We recognize that there were important differences between the studies. Patients in COAP had more severe mitral regurgitation and smaller left ventricles. They were already taking optimal medical treatment before randomization. And finally, the edge-to-edge -edge repair technique in COAPT was arguably better than that in Mitra France, with more use of mitra, uh, multiple clips um, and better echocardiographic outcomes at one year follow-up. So for that reason, uh, PCR and EAPCI endorse the results of COAPT and recommend, a, recommend selection of patients for transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair based upon the COAPT selection criteria. Well, this is very important. And Francesco, do you think we need to add something more, a second step to all this? Well, I think uh, one of the main uh, messages of uh, COAPT trial is that it is a synergy trial. It is a trial that shows that MitraClip works in selected patients who are well treated by experienced operators. And it is a trial that achieve outcomes which are, I would say, superior to the average outcomes that we have been observing in Europe, probably because of patient selection, but most important because these patients have been managed in a synergic way together with the heart failure specialists so they had the best of the two worlds. So the key element, I think, for the next step will be to find a way to get more synergic rather than alternative. Till today, I would say the mitral interventions have been seen very often in Europe as like a, a last option for these uh, hopeless patients. And I think uh, mitral FR reflects somehow 
the trend that you use these devices like magic, like almost like an alternative to transplantation. I think we should understand that these therapies work better in an earlier stage and only by engaging the heart failure community, the referring cardiologists, maybe even the family physicians, will be fundamental to obtain uh, better outcomes and impact on, uh, on survival of our patients. Well, at the end of all, then, we could sort of describe a little bit what we think it could be the uh, ideal patient for this technique. So the ideal scenario is that these patients should be referred early to a specialist heart team who will consider the range of treatment options and before embarking on an interventional treatment will ensure that they are taking maximal guideline directed medical treatment and will have a CRT device if they are uh, appropriate for such a, an intervention. They then need expert echocardiography to evaluate the relative contributions of mitral regurgitation and left ventricular dilatation. And only those carefully selected patients should then undergo edge-to-edge -edge repair. We also need to remember that there are other emerging technologies that remain under evaluation that may play a role in the future. And finally, as Francesco was said, we need to avoid the pitfall of only intervening very late in the natural history of the disease when the patient has less than a year to live because these interventions are futile and very expensive. Yes, you're perfectly right and I think this is a really big effort that you're doing for the community and for so many patients that we know that have functional mitral regurgitation. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And we had a nice talk about it. Thank you. <laughs>